painful medieval torture devices. While medieval torture devices were no fun on the receiving end, it can be morbidly entertaining to learn about them from the comforts of your home. Strap yourselves in because this ride gets painful, fast. The Saw Before the saw was given its perfunctory role to slice through wood and thick material, it was used to slice through humans for torture or execution. The victim would be held upside down, allowing the blood to rush to their head, and then the torturer would slowly start slicing them between their legs, with the blood contained in the head. The victim would remain conscious throughout most of the slicing, often only passing out or dying when the saw hit their midsection. Pair of Anguish So, what is the pair of anguish? Particularly hideous. This simple mechanical torture device would be placed inside the orifice of a person and then gradually expanded. The kindest use was in a person's mouth where it would ultimately shatter the skull, causing death. More gruesome is when it was used on parts in the lower half of the body which were rarely fatal, but excruciating. Iron Maiden not just a rocking metal band. The Iron Maiden torture device is truly the stuff of nightmares. It was an enclosed structure lined with spikes that would entirely surround a person. They would be left inside for interminable amounts of time, unable to do anything but stand, lest they be pierced by the metal protrusions. You can guess how it might go once the legs started to tire out. Breast Ripper or the Spider for those women who were accused of adultery, abortion or any other crime, they were subjected to the painful torture of the breast ripper or the spider. As the name suggests, the claw-like device, which ended in spikes, was heated and then used to rip off or shred a woman's breast. The spider was a variant, attached to a wall instead of clamped onto a woman's breast by a torturer. The Rack Probably the most known torture device from the Middle Ages, the rack was a wooden platform, with rollers at both ends. The victim's hands and feet were tied to each end and the rollers would be turned, stretching the victim's body to uncomfortable lengths. Spanish Tickler Not to be confused with the French tickler that we've all got tucked into the bottom of our sock drawer for anniversaries. This is a set of claws meant to dig into the skin and penetrate down to the bone. It is then yanked away, pulling flesh and muscle with it in great chunks. Obviously, medieval torture methods didn't have to be overly elaborate to be effective. The Collar One of the more cruel and unusual punishment examples. The collar was meant to hold the neck in a single position, and it was tightened just enough to be uncomfortable. The real torture came after days without being able to lay down, rest your head, eat, or swallow. Brazen Bull a brutal method of slow cooking. A hollow iron bull would be cast with a special gate on the side. Victims were placed inside, while a fire was lit beneath the belly. A vent at the nose allowed the person to breathe, but also amplified their screams to sound like a bull's bellows. Knee splitter Used frequently during the Spanish Inquisition. The knee splitter, naturally, was used to split a victim's knee. The device was built from two spiked wood blocks with a screw at the back, and was clamped on the front and back of the knee. One turn of the screw and, hey presto, a knee was easily, and painfully, crippled. It was also used on other parts of the body. The Head Crusher Extremely inventive with names. The Head Crusher did exactly what it was called. The chin sat on the bottom rung, the head under the cap, and the turning of the screws would result in a very disgusting death, brains seeping out of the popped eye sockets, crushed teeth and bones, and mutilated remains. 